been a bit quiet lately, but that doesn't mean I'm not doing things. And so I'm going to let you in on a little thing that I'm doing. We are about to do something very unique for the Rivian, and it is a play off of a 12 volt battery, dual battery system you would see in normal vehicles, but typically those are powered by alternators. Well, we don't really have an alternator here, and well, I need to get my search and rescue radio going and my lights going. So temporarily, we're just going to power the radio. Now, how am I gonna do that? Well, here comes the Renegy Rego. Super slim solid state lithium battery and uh, 12.8 volts 104 amp hours 1331 watts nice, right? It is going to be powering this. This is my anytone This is going to be my VHF radio that I'm going to use it for you know technically to, uh, you're supposed to have three different radios Even though it can be all three different radios You need to have three different radios to communicate for like GMRS and then a uh, ham also this is my main way that I keep in contact with everybody on the team during searches. Where exactly am I going to put this? Well, what I am planning on doing is mounting everything in here to where it could be, you know, locked in here if I ever need to take it off because the lights and everything will be back here. It will be in there. But me being me, me, me being me, I have this space down here that I barely use. In fact, I had two blankets down there for the longest time. Let's see what it looks like with it in there. It's a little snug fit side to side, but they say, Maple. Hey, puppy tax, Maple, you gotta say hi. You gotta tell everybody hi, say hi. Oh yeah, she's getting so big, she's almost two. I love you. This has kind of been a super long time since I actually made a video and a lot of things have changed around here in the house. Over the last couple years, Mercedes has come down with a heart murmur that continuously got worse and worse and worse. And her heart started not pumping as well. And in the middle of June, we put her on some heart medicine to try to get it to pump easier and everything like that. And then, no, middle of May, that's whenever we put her on some heart meds. And by June, one day she just woke up, collapsed, soiled herself, shit all over the floor. And I rushed her into the hospital and they confirmed that there was fluids around her heart, in her lungs, or fluid around her, in her lungs and everything because her heart wasn't pumping enough to get all the water out of everywhere, you know. So we had to make the tough choice. I had to make the tough choice of putting her down. So nearly 12 years, she was a week shy of her birthday, but I had to say goodbye to my best friend. So lately it's just been Maple and I and Muse and the chickens. It is a little bit simpler and a little bit easier for me to take care of just one dog instead of both of them because one's a puppy and one's an old lady. So I had to cater to both and she loves, uh, Maple loves doggy daycare. So we're doing good there. So once business starts slowing down, I am definitely going to be bringing Maple out a little bit more on adventures. So, a Mercedes was a good dog. Yeah. But now she's up in heaven with Mama. Best friends ever. Since this is solid state, we don't really have to worry about it heating up way too much, especially since it's going to be in a climate controlled place like the vehicle. So, we are we do got about an inch of space up top, but we have a lot of space at the bottom. I could possibly take out this tub that's in here and maybe build something down there to mount it. But remember, this is only temporary and it's only going to be used while I'm out searching. So I'm not going to have the seat. If I run into any overheating issues, all I'll have to do is just raise this seat and everything should be good. It's, it's stuck in there. So this isn't going to be banging around. It does have some technology in there to where it's all like helps with being in vehicles and bumps and everything like that, which is nice. Honestly, this is probably going to face here this way so that I can mount the positive negative of the radio to go that way through the seats because it can come out right here and go straight to the front where I need it. My first order of business is to mount these to the battery and then also test the power for the radio to make sure it does work because I don't want to mount it into the vehicle, get it all ready, and it just doesn't work. You know what I mean? So we can actually mount this first and put it somewhere temporary because I'm working with someone else right now who might be making a radio holder. We'll see how that goes, but temporarily this could be down below where it needs to be. So right now I've got some of these. The crazy part was I had to go to O'Reilly's because Best Buy didn't have these. The only reason why that saved for this is that it fits over here. This is five and 16th, right? Yeah, five 16th ring. Whereas Home Depot carries one fourth. And so this is more meant for outdoors, more for like boats and stuff like that. Whereas stuff at Home Depot isn't really either. 
you know, it's more for home, home stuff. But it fits perfectly over here. And so that way, whenever we tie it in right there, it's gonna be nice and everything, nice for us, right? I've never actually worked with electrical stuff before. I've done motor swaps, I've done brake swaps, I've done, you know, suspension and everything like that. But this is all on older cars. And whenever it came down to engine harnesses and stuff like that, I never actually stripped wire and anything like that. I did some networking before, so like Cat5 cables and stuff like that, but that was close to 30 years ago. So I've been teaching myself how to strip wire and uh, crimp, and you're probably like, dude, this is like the simplest of simple, but you know, it's, I've been bothering Scott and Kevin and everybody on the um, d new Discord that we have right now. Actually, Emerald City, this Emerald City Rivian Club Discord, I've, we've been, practicing this back and forth saying what I'm going to be doing they're throwing around the ideas they're like hey is that going to be enough heat you know heat distribu distribution for it to stay nice and cool or what and I'm just all like I don't know we'll see and so Karen's been helping Scott's been helping David's been throwing in his stuff we there's a new discord that was made for EV off-roaders it's basically a bunch of cyber trucks and Rivians right now which is kind of cool they've been telling me how to knock this stuff out I'm going to try it we will see. I know I don't need my copper showing too much, so I know I'm going to have to cut this back just a little bit. Let's go ahead and that can fray out very easily. And then take the crimpers down here, put that in. Oh, I want to just make sure everything's lining up okay. And then squeeze. And as I give it a tug, make sure that everything is good there. I kind of feel like this can smush just a little bit. It's probably not the best way to crimp right there, but there we go. We have a nice fit right there on the positive. Let's do the same for the negative. Now, I know there's many different ways to, as I say, skin a cat. If you guys see anything that I am doing that you would do different, please let me know. Please let me know. I am always willing to learn more. There we go. We got this in also. We believe this bolt is a 12 millimeter. So let's go ahead and get a 12 millimeter socket out of the Rivian. Oh. You know, life would be so much easier if I just didn't have these hay bells in here. You guys are probably like, Dom, you have a tool chest over there. I'm like, I do. But I literally moved a lot of the good tools into here. And one nice thing about this radio wire from Anytone is that it already comes fused. So I thought I was gonna have to splice it and fuse it myself, but there's two 15 amps, both in the negative and the positive which is nice because they're like hook this straight to this but fuse it and you'll be fine so yeah let's go ahead and get the <sighs> so apparently <laughs> it was a 13 millimeter and not a 12 millimeter and there we go now for the test did i do this right or did i not all right <gasps> It booted. It turned on. Oh, guys, I did it. No way. Now, I still need to get this all fixed up and everything and coded, formatted right, whatever you want to call that. So I'm not going to set up really too much anything right now, but let's go ahead and turn this off. Can we turn this off? There is one piece of the puzzle that I haven't discussed, and how is it, how am I going to actually power this battery? Because I don't have the solar hooked up just yet, okay? And so that means I need to figure out how to charge it without having to connect it to my 12 volt or the high, the high voltage battery or the, yeah, really crappy 12 volt battery. So that's whenever we are coming up with this right here. It's a Vitron Energy. It's a, it, it's a charger. So anytime that I am out in the field and I don't have a full battery, I can plug this in to the 12 volt in the back. Not 12 volt, but the, the 10. All right, so next day I had to, I had to go get some more wire. So I got some 10 gauge wire. Only reason why is because this smart charger right here doesn't come with like its own wire to connect to the battery. So I had to get some wire. I'm learning how to splice. I, I, I don't know what the hell I am doing, but with my handy dandy splicer, everything is looking good. Then I'll get this put in here like that. Then I got my crimpers, okay? I'm not gonna bore you guys with this completely, but just take that, squeeze that, and now I have my positive side. I'm gonna do the same for the negative side. I might remake these in the future, but I'm not making them too long because more likely than not, the charger is going to be right next to the battery, so about a foot is fine. And the one nice thing about this right here is that I can strip, well first, 
we want to cut the wire, okay? And then we can strip it for a 10 like that. Now, now remember, I've never done this, so this is all new and exciting to me. I'm sure you guys have done this many times before, but for me to do this, I feel like it's a whole new skill for me. Okay, let's cut it back just, just a smidge. There we go. Yeah, no, so all of this is, again, brand new to me. I am hoping I'm doing everything right. That's one thing I love about learning new things is that I know I am going to be bad at it, but then also know that over time I will get good at it and then finally be able to do everything I need to do on here. So yeah, let's go ahead and... So what we're gonna wanna do is loosen this just a little bit. So it does come with a fuse. Some people are saying that you need another fuse along the positive wire, but I'm also hearing things that I don't need that. So we are going to try to try it with out first and if i die you guys know why excuse the extra noise behind miss maple has herself a nice little just put it in like that then tighten it down righty tidy good to go there let's get the pause oh what did i just draw i don't want to be dropping things and losing them let's go over here with the yep. i feel like with having an electrical vehicle I should be knowing a lot of this stuff, but I know my faults and I know that I need to, you know, learn some things and that is fine. Hey, okay, moment of truth. Got the positive set up to the positive, the negative set up to the negative. Once I actually plug this in, this should actually start and pick what it needs to do. Maybe I might die. And let's see on the app and it is charging. Fully charged time in two hours and six minutes. So right now we are at 40% and it should, oh, two hours, six minutes. Wow, that's it's actually doing kind of nice. So yeah, Here are the lights that I'm going to be going with. They're called Phoenix, but they're flashing ambers, which is awesome. And we are just, this maple down there, I'm going to be placing them right along here, right along the T-Tracks. So I'm going to have two on each side, two in the back, two in the front. And in controlling it will be the diode dynamics so that the only problem is with the front I might actually have it on the top row just so that it looks like little itty bitty flashers But you'll be able to see it honestly without chat GPT and the people from the internets I'm not even sure if I would have been able to do this now that I got powering it I need to mount it and I'm thinking of doing like a ghost mount What does that mean? So you can't see it while it's just day-to-day -day use all right until I get the mount that goes right here, okay, that should be allowing me to mount right there, I'm going to put it down here. Now, it's not necessarily the greatest spot, right, because I am going to need to fold this up in order to try to, you know, change the numbers and everything like that. But we are going to mount it upside down just in case if I do need to do that. But we are going to have to put in the antenna and everything too, which I have the antenna wire right there. So temporarily, it's gonna be here. I brought Miss Maple to the dog park today and I didn't put in my my cover. Let's see how we have this. All right, we got the battery in here, right? We got this low enough. There is gonna be some air that's gonna be breathing through there. I got the positive negatives covered for right now. Um, I left this battery for about a week at full charge and it's only down to 99.53, which is nice, which I think it's the Bluetooth that was causing it to drain just a little bit for the most part because it connects to your app so that you could check it on the app to see what percentage it is at and everything like that. So now our fun part is, it's actually quite simple. I'm probably going to, I don't have people coming in and out of here. So routing it, actually, you know what? I can route this underneath here. Let's do that. All right, so we're not gonna do too much tucking because this is only a temporary spot. So let's go ahead and get this plugged in. <laughs> it's upside down. I still need to program this, but I think we are good to go right now. Let's see what it's like if I come in here and... Yeah, so we got this going right now. Let's see how I want to route this antenna now. So until I end up getting a shipment in for the mount, we're going to be using this fence hardware. Yeah, it works for my flag, so I know it works for this antenna. While still a temporary solution, I am going to have to take it up and down. Might mount it through the window, just like hang it out through the window instead for each time I go on to a mission. It's not going to be used all the time, but 
this antenna will easily mount up. So just come up here and then just rotate like that. Now that we are on, I can just come down here, plug this in here, and now we are kind of just in here now, right? I can't fold it all the way in because the back of the antenna is causing it to stick too much. I might get with one of my 3D printer guys to see if we can't build me something a little bit bigger in here. But there we go, temporary, and then I can have the radio. So then I could just have the microphone just chilling up there with me. Let's figure something out with this. So I got the antenna ran down here, along here, underneath the seat, through here, and to the radio. So that way, whenever I get to the scene, I can just plug it in myself, you know, put it back up there and then get ready to communicate with everybody. It's actually, it's been kind of hard in my last three missions. Luckily, the three missions that we've been on, I've all been in cell reception and it hasn't been that bad for communication. But this week we are going to be programming my radio so that because I've been waiting to do this power solution. And so in that way I can communicate with the team. Alright, so I got the handheld, I got the microphone tucked in underneath there. Again, this is still super simple to take on and off. I'm gonna have to try to find a good storage for the Anna while I am not. See I'm I'm doing this all with one hand right now. And then boom, done. This can just be chilling right down here with me just tucked right in there in case i ever do need it actually i wonder i can just now might not be the best place because we do not need anyone stepping on this but for now it's fine so again this is only a temporary solution until i can get the solar going to charge this thing we can plug it in if needed but per the usage i have to be transmitting at high power for like close to 26 hours for that battery to actually just die. And if I'm talking for 26 hours straight, there might be something wrong with the world, okay? That being said, I can now talk, I can now communicate with my team, which is awesome. I might actually make a whole nother video about just joining Search and Rescue. So far, you know, it's been a very good experience. Uh, can't dive into it, can't talk about it, about the missions that we did, but you know, the three that I have been on have been a very good learning experience for me, so. Yeah, it's not the best. If you have any recommendations, let me know because I, this is like you've seen, this is all brand new for me. I don't know if I did this bad. I don't know if I did this good. You let me know. All right. Take care of you guys.